All right, welcome to the channel. This is Dr. Lisa and we're talking about the raw truth. What I found about relationships is you got to get raw and real. That is the name of my radio show, which you are welcome to uh, pop by on if you'd like, in addition to continuing to watch this and all these videos uh, on YouTube. <laughs> We're doing some videos. I'm doing these videos on the raw truth, just talking about relationship, asking you some questions, reflection points. This theme for today is common interest about relationship. Now, I had a father that said, we'll just put it, you know, my parents had a relatively dysfunctional, you know, marriage. <laughs> and what is functional and what is dysfunctional? But you know, you know what's what's going on there. He used to say to me, Lisa, make sure, they always say in the world he learned opposites attract, and yes, that's true, but you gotta have something that you vibe on together, you know? And he used to tell me that while my mother and he came together about, you know, my brother and my sister and I, and certain things like education and schooling, other than that, they didn't really have much, you know? They weren't they weren't synced in a common interest. They were more synced in separateness. And that's also fine if it's healthy and makes each being happy. Well, they were not happy, nor were they healthy. So obviously that model um, gave me a lot to undo. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing this uh, for myself. I, always, I have this fun joke that I say, my first book, Radically Alive Beyond Abuse, is my relationship with my mother. My second book, Lies of Money, is my relationship with father. And the third book is Creating After Abuse right here to the left of me, which is just me in life and living from having questions like this and reflection points like this common interest. So what does common interest mean to you in relationship? That doesn't mean you, the special one that you're choosing to be in relationship with or co-creator or collaborator or husband or wife or they or whatever you call them, your partner, significant other has to like what you like. It doesn't mean that. Maybe the common interest is like you like this and you want to share that with them and they love you so they're interested and vice versa. Maybe there is a common interest like sports. Maybe not, maybe you're two different body types and you know, one of you exercises, one of you don't exercises, or you do a little, it doesn't really even matter about the exercise piece, but you're just different, right? But maybe you love football. Both of you love football or you love soccer or, or and, and you, one may follow more than the other, but just the sport itself you love, that's a common interest. And it doesn't really matter if you're rooting for a team or not rooting for a team, but like, hey, let's watch the game. And you can make nachos and have pizza and, you know, just like scream and yell at the TV or go to the stadium or something like that. But it's fun. You're doing it together. You can't wait. That's kind of a common interest um, in a different way. Maybe it's about interior design or real estate or building something or creating your home. Those are common interests and they're really special moments where you can cooperate and collaborate and maybe one of you is great at um, decorating, you know, and or geometric shapes and creating a room or a closet or something. And maybe one of you is better at managing and lists and things like that. That's a common interest. It's for the house. You're great in two separate areas, but it all comes together in this common interest of the beauty and you did it together and you'll always have that. That's the joy. So what does common interest mean to you in relationship and how do you navigate when there isn't a common interest or, you know, sometimes just because let's say you're the taskmaster with the lists and the other person, you know, could care less about that. And you need them to kind of get with you on that. Like it could seem like they're not interested, but is that true? Well, what do you do with the emotions? If that comes up, you have to know what you're feeling about that. Check yourself before you wreck yourself and then have the hard conversation, which doesn't actually have to be hard and be like, instead of going, pointing the finger at them, be like, Hey, I really need your help. I've got this, 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 this going on. I need, could you help me with this? I need to have all this and I can't be in 12 places at once. Would you cooperate with me on this common interest? And 
most people will say yes because that's their choice to be the yes with you. And if they say no, they can't, that's okay too. You may have to schedule things for another day, rearrange the schedule to fit both of your schedules to make that common interest a reality. And that's okay. But if you never take the risk to have those conversations or to ask yourself these questions, you will never develop that strength of communion and cooperation that builds the energetic muscle of collaboration. And that creates sustainable, pleasurable, and more joyous relating. Like the channel, subscribe, I'd love to have you. Hit the bell to get notified and certainly share with me your comments. I hope this was beneficial to you.